Ultimate Firefight Sand Trap has had more than an update. This mod has been overhauled. You can select to be an ODST, a UNSC Marine, a Naval Engineer, or a Spartan. You can select various permutations for whatever category you choose. For the Navy Crewman, you can select Engineer, Scientist, Security MP, Command Crew, and equip a pilot helmet. Have you always wanted to play as a Marine in a firefight mode in Halo 3? Now you can with this mod. Of course, I'm fast forwarding through the vast selection. I feel like rocking a bandana today. Heading to the launch bay, there's a screen to your left with an operations crewman on a computer. You can select different modes and the round you would like to start at. The higher the round number, the more intense the waves will be. Once you've made your selection, you can make your way to the lift where you can select a partner. A readout states it's under revision. Perhaps more partners will be included later. Entering the lift, it's go time. Begin the mission. This is your ride, the Vulture, call sign Kilo 951, a UNSC heavy gunship, perfect for putting warheads on foreheads and agricultural burning. A swooping in-game cutscene like in Halo Combat Evolved will show you the Vulture's detailed interior and it will integrate the character you select. This little detail is so cool to me. I also selected the Halo 2 ODST. This mod includes adaptive in-game Halo soundtracks. Now let's fight. There are two twin auto cannons underneath the vulture, and on top there are eight vertical air to surface missiles. The auto cannons and missiles are controlled by you. In fact, let's take a further look inside the vulture. It's clean and orderly inside here as opposed to the chaos happening outside. The aft consists of six seats with cargo storage up above and neatly fastened crates. The fuselage consists of manual access points for the silver missile launchers that carry Phoenix missiles, which is a very neat detail. A lot of screens, consoles, computers, and panels are defined very well along with transparent windows. Here is where you will sit. Time to get cozy. I don't see a cup holder though. And here is the pilot seat. It's really neat being able to see the pilot and co-pilot in theater mode. Just knowing your character model is actually inside the aircraft is really cool. Before stepping out of the Vulture into Sand Trap, you can look around the interior and give the pilot a pep talk if you want, or you can rush out with your team. The Banished Brutes are Halo 2 Anniversary models with modifications to their armor that denotes Banished. The Grunts are in armor from various Halo games with Banished Red Clad. Listen to the weight of a brute collapsing in its heavy armor. It's so interesting, visual changes from armor busting off of the enemies piece by piece makes this feel like a whole new Halo game. The enemies truly feel like they exist in the world, from a big burly brute to a grunt getting punched in the face. And this banished brute warlord looks intimidating, as they should be. This Enforcer caster is so good, it saved my butt so many times. When brutes charge at you in this armor, it's like looking at professional linemen blitzing.
This magma pistol is inspired by Halo SPV-3, and it's extremely useful in your hands and the enemies. It also has considerable range. There are plenty of familiar weapons imported from other Halo games. We even go as far back as the Rocket Hog from the PC version of Halo Combat Evolved. What's interesting is that I tried to entice the AI to fire at enemies, but the gunner in PC waited for a clear shot on targets farther away from friendlies. They are very accurate with the Rocket Hog, so I recommend letting them take the gun. The flare is very useful in this mod, blinding the abundance of weaker enemies when you start taking shots from the side. I just want to take some extra time to appreciate this Halo 2 ODST model. Looks fantastic. Alright, let's go ahead and talk about the friendly forces in this mod. The AI can drive you around Sandtrap while in the back of a Warthog with an immersive first person view. You can deploy characters from other Halo games, such as all members of Noble Team, and all members of Alpha 9 from Halo 3 ODST, including Dare, as just a few examples. Then you can deploy Marines and other Spartans, all of which are open for you to give them names. You can swap weapons with these friendlies. No matter who they are, they are extremely helpful. Here's why. Your friendlies move towards the action on the field and follow you from a distance. This allows them to surround a pack of enemies instead of tagging right behind you like a bunch of defenseless ducklings following their parent. In this case that you see on screen, I redeployed in a pod landing in a hot zone on the other side of the map. While doing my best to stay alive, the closest two Spartans made their way through avenues of approach and one flanked the pack dividing the enemy AI's attention, we simply gain the upper hand. This is because the AI is designed to cover a large distance. Your enemies, however, will cover just as much ground, so it will be a balanced fight. As for your partner, they can be revived just like recognizable Halo characters. Those characters are considered heroes in this mod. My partner is now sliced with an energy sword, while they are downed, my partner is not out. Simply walk over and revive them. Any non-hero or partner characters cannot be revived. Speaking of AI, there is an AI character that speaks to you on the radio with a male voice. They did such a great job, allowing a story to flesh out between waves and rounds. Listen to this. Okay, Alpha Squad. I'm going to keep you up to date on what the science and intelligence teams are telling me. I'm pretty sure it's going to eventually become important for you down on the ground. We've got a bit of a mystery on our hands. Oh, there are certainly mysteries in this mod waiting for you to solve them. You know how Sandtrap, till this day, has skepticism of deep forerunner meaning? Well, this mod implements its own mysteries by spawning artifacts at certain times for you to scan. This is what happened when I scanned my first artifact. Me and my allies stopped in place. Whoa, Alpha Squad, I just received your scan. That artifact you found, it's definitely Forerunner in origin. There are various voice actors in this mod, and they did such a great job with radio comms, making you truly feel like there is more taking place story-wise than just playing wave after wave of firefight. We're going to work on deciphering this. Thanks for finding it. Keep an eye out for anything else interesting. Not only can you be a Hellbringer, you can deploy Hellbringers in this mod. You can move more quickly with a turret or a flamethrower than you can in the retail game, but I think it's cooler to see the professional Hellbringers do it themselves.
Speaking of bringing hell, here is a flamethrower warthog. But not only is a flamethrower attached, it's also an incendiary grenade launcher. Pull and hold the right trigger for the flamethrower, pull the left trigger for launching grenades. How cool! It's best used on infantry at medium to close range. Up the ante with the Cobra. You can use the double barrel 30 Mike Mike railguns or go supersonic with 105 Mike Mike. And when things get a little too sickly green, the Cobra is really mean. The Jackrabbit has improved in its visuals since I last showed it off, with activated interior screens, exterior decals, an activated tail lamp, a layer of dirt on the tires to include activated headlamps that look really good. Remember, lights on for safety. This Jackrabbit has a machine gun attached, whereas an alternate version has a grenade launcher. You will see that one soon. First, I want to show you this Flood Juggernaut. It has a custom boarding animation specifically for the Jackrabbit. For a moment, I thought the character model was just stuck on the Jackrabbit, but then I noticed the Juggernaut is wrapping its tentacle under the body of the Jackrabbit, like a sneaky snake attacking its prey. I just continued to shoot at it. I didn't bother to get out of the Jackrabbit. I thought it was so cool. We've got a bit of a ministry on our hands. We're finding Marines down there. That shouldn't be. They shouldn't even be on the Ark. This is the grenade launcher Jackrabbit, and you'll notice a little detail. If a Jackrabbit takes damage, the wheels will start to wobble. With a mix of Covenant and Banished weapons, the sandbox is very balanced. This mod will make you want to try every weapon available. Which brings us to the Skitterer. Now when I first saw these creepy crawlers and they started to fly, I thought, oh boy, here we go. Even one of the marine allies yelled out, get the raid. But they actually are not tedious to fight, especially when you use their weapons against them. This is a burst pistol. It's very effective against them, but it's not the only weapon you will find that they carry. Time to accept the challenge of stepping into the arena. First, let's admire the beasts. Impressive armor with a brute skull as a trophy. Hmm, they seem pretty cool. I'll accept their challenge. Very homey. I love what they've done to the place. Red is my favorite color. In this arena, you fight waves of whatever species the banished were able to force into the fray. You even get to fight a grunt goblin. You can fight Prometheans and Sentinel Enforcers. You also get to fight the Heretics. Heroic difficulty will give you allies to fight in the arena with, so you're not going into the arena completely solo. Back in Sandtrap, a Cyclops unit has been deployed. and something has launched a Cyclops into high charity. Yeah. 
This terrifying thing is named the Demos, known in Greek mythology as God of Dread and Terror. Now you can be just that to your enemies. <laughs> You'll be rewarded by wielding the Demos's energy blade. When going up against the Demos, I recommend using plasma weapons to slow it down and make it lethargic. It may charge at you, but remain steadfast and keep pouring the plasma bolts onto this freak. The best option would be to find a power drainer to deplete all of its energy in seconds. But if you don't have a power drainer nearby, you gotta take this out quickly. This mod also does something I wish more games did, in that it deliberately engages your subwoofer. When the Demos is getting ready to charge you, there is a distinct rumble. Listen to this. Huntress One flying you over. A mongoose. They really needed me to make a pelican trip for this? Couldn't we have flew it over with a kite or something? The Covenant appear in this mod. They will fight any banished in sight, reminding us of similar skirmishes that took place in High Charity of Halo 2. Wow, the Chief is letting it all hang out. Your eyes are not deceiving you. I am taking to the sand trap skies, saving humanity in the comfort of a prophet's chair. The chair's weapon is very powerful, by the way. Everyone was teaming up to take down the flood juggernaut first. Prophets will attack, but will evade if given the opportunity. You must be silenced. Let's go, Tartar Sauce. Listen to the engine sound of the banished ghost. Even idling, it has a snarl and a menacing sound to it. I'm also a big fan of the light effects. I think they look great. If you want to destroy a vehicle and you want it done right, Hoorah! then you take the Grizzly, a heavily armored yet rapid mobility dual high velocity cannon tank with two machine guns. All weapons can be operated by the driver. The legendary mod author, Weaver 900, is working on the missile barrage upgrade in the garage to get it serviceable. There are five separate tracks on this Grizzly tank, so Enjoy that, maintenance team. The fifth track is in the center rear, as you can see there. And of course, headlamps on for safety. The Grizzly's two cannons fire 120 mic mic, as opposed to the Scorpion's 90. 
Now let's go ahead and take this bad girl out for a spin and pay attention to the spread of destruction. You just don't see this type of destruction in the Scorpion. Speed is the key with the Grizzly, and even the Covenant are showing up to try to take out the big, bad, beautiful bear. Now I saw something fall from the sky. I wasn't sure what it was at first. Could it have been some type of flood form? Well, I had to go and investigate. I found out it was a lifeboat with a Marine and a Navy crewman that had survived the landing. The two both joined in the fight. Checking out the lifeboat model, it's very similar to Halo Combat Evolved. And it's solid too. You cannot walk through it. So you could, if you need to, use it as cover. This is a Hunter's Spike Cannon, very deadly. No, I know we're just getting started. The Falcon has made its way to this mod. Your passengers let loose with the grenade launchers attached on each side. You do have the machine gun you can control as the pilot. Your allies are very trigger happy, and I love it for that. It's so much fun to fly this Falcon. You can also control the turret and allow the AI to fly. Now you are susceptible to getting EMP'd. With the introduced modified weapons in this mod, you can be EMP'd for about a second, and then your Falcon can recover. Now what if you don't have a falcon?
going to be a fight to the core with an enemy packed scarab. A beautiful trident. Watch your surroundings when the flood arrives. You can operate a Covenant Scarab in this mod. Naturally, the Banished don't like the look of this, so they send something in to deal with it. For the ending, expect to fight three more waves with a final boss. Thank you to all of the mod authors that helped Weaver 900 make this incredible mod truly ultimate, truly Halo. Dude, first chance hey, I get. Have a Download this gem through the Nexus or Steam Workshop links in the description of this video.
Coyote.